Do you know what an open source JavaScript runtime created by the author of Node.js and this YouTube channel have in common? That we both decided to release a second iteration of our projects, and today we will deep dive into the new features and some breaking changes of Dino version 2.0. This is the first video of this new chapter of my YouTube life, so if you were following before, welcome back. If you are new, welcome to this channel, I'm Edo. I will try to cover some news in the coding space. You will see many videos with different titles, different categories. Source code is the one dedicated to coding news, and in each episode we will try to uh, discover understanding new features of popular libraries, new releases, features in the open source ecosystem and whether it's backend, frontend or the cloud. If you're not new around here, you will notice some little changes. First of all, I was too Italian and I think I must stop doing these jokes because only Italian can understand them. But really, I hope every one of you will enjoy what I'm trying to do here. There will be new features, new changes in the upcoming months, so stay with me and most importantly, give me some feedback because I want to improve, I want to do these things in the best way possible for you and also for me, of course. But let's jump into today's topic. We will talk about Dino. So first of all, what's Dino? I don't know if you're familiar with Dino. I will let Ryan Dahl, the creator himself, explaining what is Dino. He spoke with Wes Boss in the Syntax podcast and here's how he described Dino. Dino is a a server-side JavaScript system. Uh, it's it's pretty, you know, in the same boat as Node.js, and in a, a pretty real way, is is like my continuation of the the Node project. Node has all of these ways of operating with Node modules, folders, and package JSON that aren't necessarily specified in any standard. Dino is really trying to simplify this and make make server-side JavaScript as beautiful as it can be, because JavaScript is the default program language and deserves a great future. So Dino is basically a replacement for Node.js and Ryan Dahl himself created Dino to fix some of the things he regretted doing in Node.js, as he explained. Um, another regret is security, because JavaScript is a very secure sandbox, unlike Python, right? Um, and unfortunately, in Node, we just bound to everything and there's zero security, right? You run a Node program, you have access to all sorts of system calls, and that was really a missed opportunity. Probably the biggest regret is the build system. Such a pain. Node uses this thing called JIP. Do you guys know JIP? Another thing, package JSON. Package JSON is like the lifeblood of, of JavaScript at this point. But, you know, at some point it wasn't. Isaac more or less defined it, although there might have been some sort of of uh, specification. And I largely sanctioned it and made it popular by allowing uh, require in Node semantics to look into package JSON and look through files. So this is what happened. And now we have this JavaScript runtime, which is Dino, which is, let's say, it's not exactly widely adopted. In fact, if you look at the state of JS 2023, which is a survey of many JavaScript uh, technology and tools uh, that the community are using, you see that Node.js, of course, is uh, the first JavaScript runtime. And if you take away the browser and service workers, because they are useless here, you see that actually in the second place we have Bun, and in the third place we have Dino. And the reason why Bun is more popular than Dino is maybe because Bun is way more compatible with the Node.js ecosystem and the JavaScript ecosystem in general. So many popular JavaScript libraries work out of the box with Bun, and they don't work with Dino. Unless less until now. So this probably is a challenge for the wide adoption of Dino, but we know of some big project that is using Dino under the hood. For example, Slack is using Dino, they are talking about it. You will find also some articles on the Dino blog talking about the Slack adoption of Dino and how they use the platform and some solutions that they adopted. So that's it. TLDR Dino, it's a JavaScript runtime created by the author of Node.js. It's open source and they also offer a cloud cloud hosting, so it's an open source project, but it's also a company offering their products. And some days ago, they released the first release candidate of Dino 2.0. And if you follow the Dino quest, you will find some interesting surprises here. So let's start reading something out of this post. Last month, we released the final 1.x version with 1.46, and today we're cutting the release candidate for Dino 2.0, which includes everything we expect in the final release. 
This is the largest update since 1.0, with major changes like the introduction of Node's Process Global. We've also made some philosophical shifts, like preferring Dino install over the now deprecated Dino cache. To try out this release candidate, you just type Dino upgrade in your CLI. So first of all, changes to the global variables. Dino 2 comes with two major changes to global variables. Window is gone and Node's Process is now available. We introduced the Window Global in Dino version 1.0, with the goal being to make Dino as browser compatible as possible, because of course Window is a global object in the browser runtime. Unfortunately, the Window Global became a source of problems for users. Many libraries check if they are executed in the browser by probing for a window global variable instead of checking for the existence of DOM. This is of course a bad practice, but many libraries are doing this. So this led to a class of bugs in libraries that would otherwise work in Dino due to window being globally available. Because of course, if your library checks for the window object and it founds it, it assumes that it's in the browser runtime, while instead it's in the server runtime. Dino started to discourage use of window global in version 1.40, suggesting to use global this or self instead. And we see this snippet of code. We have this uh, window.addEventListener in Dino 1, and now in Dino 2 we have this global this dot add event listener. In contrast, the process global has been widely requested. While it has been possible to use process by importing it from node process module for a long time, many popular frameworks rely on its presence in the global scope, often used in configuration files. Uh, if you're not familiar with process, this is the node API uh, that checks for events in the node process itself, like for example when um, a message arrives or when the process uh, stops or starts, uh, so the event life cycle of nodes or something that's happening at uh, the node process level. So using the node process API, you can basically attach callbacks to what's happening in node, so you have hooks on the node process life cycle. So let's continue the article. Although adding import process from node process seems simple, it often causes friction for users of popular frameworks that would otherwise work seamlessly in Dino. So with the addition of process global, you can expect a lot more code written originally for Node.js to work with no changes in Dino, because of course you have libraries that expect the process global to exist, in Dino it did not, so uh, you had incompatibilities, but now you, you don't have them. However, we still encourage users to prefer explicit imports. Uh, thus a new no process global lint rule was added that will provide hints and quick fixes in your editor to use an import statement instead. Now, dependency management. Dino 2 comes with several new features that improve dependency management. The Dino add subcommand now handles specifiers with a subpath. You can add a package from JSR, which is, I didn't talk about it, but it's a JavaScript repository of packages uh, created by the Dino team itself, so by Ryan Dahl and its team. So it's a competitor of NPM, basically. So now with Dino add, you can specify a subpath. Before, in version 1.46, for example, if you type Dino add with the subpath, in this example, the standard testing slash snapshot, you get a failure. But now in Dino 2.0, it works, basically. And you can do the same with uh, NPM. For example, here you have preact slash hooks. Uh, you could do that but now in version 2.0 you can do that. And there's a note, using JSR or NPM prefixes is now required when adding dependencies to avoid potential ambiguity between packages with same names in both registries. Additionally, if your project contains package.json file, Dino will prefer adding npm uh, as a prefix, so npm dependencies to package.json rather than dino.json. And you can also add dev dependencies to package.json using the uh, dev flag. So let's move on. Dino install now supports the entry point flag, which allows you to install all dependencies from a given module. For example, here in your main TS, you are importing uh, a couple of modules, snapshot from uh, testing slash snapshot and express from npm express. And now calling Dino install with this entry point main.ts 
uh, Dino basically downloads the packages that you required in your main TS file. A new Dino remove subcommand has been added to quickly remove some of the dependencies, something that we already expect from a package manager. Now, these updates collectively streamline the process of managing dependencies in Dino projects, making it more intuitive and aligned with modern development workflows. Okay, let's move on. We have also some changes to the permission system. Now, uh, Dino's permission system is one of its most loved features. In fact, in Dino, you have a really granular permission system. So when the user tries to run your code with Dino, they have to really uh, specify and allow API per API to the Dino process runtime in order to uh, allow the process to access that API. So when a program tries to access an API that was not allowed using the allow uh, API flag, an error is raised. In Dino version 1.x, this was Dino.errors.permissionDenied. There was one problem with that though. All operating systems raise this error too. For example, when your user does not have access to an admin-only file or when you are trying to listen on a privileged port. Because of this, users were often confused to see that error raised despite running with the allow all flag. In Dino version 2.0, a lack of Dino permissions now raises the Dino.errors.not capable error instead to make it easier to discriminate between OS level errors and Dino errors. So you see what's happening here. We have some JavaScript call trying to read a file. In Dino version 1.46, running this file raised the permission denied error, uh, while in version 2.0, this same code raises the not capable error. So if you allow the Dino to access this file, but the operating system doesn't allow Dino to access the same file, so you get different errors. And now let's look at some API changes, because now we have some APIs that have been stabilized in Dino 2, like WebGPU, that no longer requires the unstable WebGPU flag. And by the way, with Dino, you can do great things with WebGPU, because you actually can create a program in JavaScript that access your GPU, like a video game, and then using the Dino bundler, you can uh, like compile an executable, which can run, for example, on Windows, so you have a video game that you can uh, deploy uh, wherever you want. So, uh, that's great. And now also the Dino.dlopen and other FFI APIs no longer require the unstable FFI flag and Dino.createHttp client no longer requires the unstable HTTP flag. On the release notes you also have a list of breaking changes to some API. This is important uh, especially if you are creating a library. And from the user perspective we also have a couple of changes to the command line interface, the CLI. So Dino2 removes support for two subcommands, the Dino bundle because this subcomment was deprecated in Dino 1.31 due to mismatch in expectation of users and the actual functionality provided by the built-in bundle. What does it mean that many Dino users expected a general purpose, highly customizable bundler? However, Dino's built-in bundler was meant as a simple tool to concatenate multiple files into a single file for easier distribution. There were not settings to customize any behavior either. We plan to implement a new built-in bundler, so look out for updates in future releases. And Dino Vendor that was deprecated in Dino 1.45 and superseded by a much easier solution of using vendor option in Dino.json introduced in Dino version 1.37. And now we have also several flags uh, deprecated, so check the release notes. Also now import assertions are dead. Uh, the import assertion support was deprecated in Dino uh, 1.46 and it's no longer available in Dino 2. So you can no longer uh, write this this logic uh, with the import data from blah 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 and assert uh, the type uh, that you are getting. Now you write uh, like import data uh, with the keyword width and this is being renamed to import attributes. And now the other big milestone of this release, the better Node.js and NPM compatibility. We have already seen uh, the improvements that have been made to be more compatible with the NPM ecosystem. Now we get also improved CommonJS support. So since it's 
uh, 1.0 release, Dino has prioritized the ES modules as the primary module system, offering only limited support for CommonJS through manual creation of requires. So if you wanted to require a module using the require syntax, you had to uh, create your function require using the function create require from uh, node module. While we firmly believe that the ES modules are the future of JavaScript, the landscape in 2024 still includes numerous libraries and projects relying on CommonJS. Despite Dino's robust handling of CJS libraries over the past year, users occasionally faced challenges when integrating CommonJS, particularly within their own code bases. In Dino 2, several improvements were made to help working with CommonJS modules and make transitions to ES modules easier. So now with Dino run, for example, index.cjs, Dino can now execute CommonJS files, provided that they use the .cjs extension. Dino does not look for package.json files and type option to determine if the file is CommonJS or ESM, so the extension is really important. When using this option, Dino will also not automatically install dependencies, so you will need to manually run Dino install upfront to ensure all required dependencies are available. And Dino permission system is still in effect. So look at this snippet of code. We are requiring express in a CJS module and running this file, we will need to have the proper permission in place. Dino can also import a CJS file, like here for example, you can import a file provided that they use the CJS extension. And Dino now supports requiring ES modules. This is only possible if the modules required do not use the top level await. So this change should improve interoperability when using mixed dependencies that rely on CommonJS and ESM. So in this case, you see that we are exporting a function in uh, ESM module, uh, but from the main.cjs file, we are requiring uh, the ESM module. And last thing that I want to share with you, bring your own node modules is the default. The bring your own node modules functionality was introduced in Dino 1.38. Does this note? While we strongly advocate to not rely on local node modules directory, a lot of existing projects and frameworks operate on the assumption that this directory will be present. Of course, many frameworks out there, for example, if you have Next uh, framework, you will surely rely on the presence of the node modules directory. So while at the beginning, Dino was strongly against this practice, now if uh, they want to be more uh, adopted and compatible with the JavaScript ecosystem, System, they decided to allow the presence of node modules and the bring your own node modules is now the default. So sometimes you still want to have a local node modules directory, even if you don't have a package.json, for example, when using frameworks like Next.js, Remix or Svelte, or when depending on NPM packages that use node API like DuckDB, SQLite 3, ESBuild and others. To improve compatibility, if a project contains package.json file, Dino will expect that node modules directory will be set up manually, like installing dependencies. And I think this is it for this video. You will find many other changes in this uh, changelog, in this official uh, blog post. I think the most important one uh, in the other changes is TypeScript. Now Dino ships with TypeScript uh, 5.6. But in the end, you have uh, other new features that you may want to check. So be sure to check this article on the official Dino blog. Uh, finally, I found this other interesting article on the new stack. It's called Dino2 arrives with long-term support NPM compatibility. Uh, from here, I found the interview uh, uh, with Wes Boss and other interesting stuff. For example, now they are offering a long-term support, so they are more open to the enterprise market uh, because for many enterprises having a long term uh, support is really important and so they are offering it basically now. And other ideas that Ryan Dahl is sharing about uh, the future of JavaScript, the fact that JavaScript uh, is here to stay basically and that they are building Dino for the future because they want to be more compatible with the JavaScript ecosystem so uh, they, that's why they decided to implement all these new changes. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you were following me before, I hope uh, all these new changes in my release 2.0, which is still a release candidate, by the way, you will see uh, some things changing. I'm still adapting to this new style, but uh, 
I hope this, all these new features uh, uh, will not be a challenge for you, but rather an opportunity. So stay with me. I promise uh, there will be great new things uh, in the upcoming months. I have big plans for this project. Uh, I want to create new formats. Uh, I want to have guests. Uh, I want to do great things. So I promise you will not be disappointed. So thanks for watching. I will see you on the next one.